been a rough few years. And that's why I trust Viagra. The roads appear to be becoming more and more dangerous, especially in the last few years. Holy moly! Oh my god! Now this increase in reckless driving and road rage incidents has finally prompted me to pick up a dash cam. This right here is the Garmin Dash Cam Mini 2. I have a 2020 Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road. So you're gonna want three things for this install. You're gonna want the Garmin Dash Cam Mini 2. You're gonna want a class 10 or faster micro SD card. I did the SanDisk Extreme 128 gigabyte. And then for my particular truck, this is the first way to install it. You're going to want this little dongle right here, dash cam power adapter. Now there's two ways to install this and I'll show you both. Let me show you what's in the box first here. You kind of see, nice packaging, pretty simple. It's a very small dash cam, something I was specifically looking for because it is so minimalistic. Can I see that right there? Very, very small, minimal buttons. So we'll talk about all that here in a minute. Put that aside. Pull that out. That's it for the packaging there. You have your installation guide, two sets of wires, cleaning cloth, and a cigarette lighter power adapter. And you also have a spare stick on piece for your window with the ball joint there to connect in case this one breaks. Now the two wires you get, you have a extra long wire and a short wire. So let's talk about the install and we'll talk about how you can use either one of these. Step one, carefully cut out your micro SD card. These things are always a pain to get out here. Get that out. And then on the side of your dash cam here, there's a slot for it with a picture. Looks like it only goes one way. Push in till it clicks. Hear that there? Next, you're going to pick a spot for your dash cam. I'm going to put it so it's behind the mirror so when I look, I can't really see the dash cam and it won't block my view down here below the mirror where my usual visual is of the road. So I'm gonna go on the passenger side, on the right side here of the, this column right here and put it right here. You're gonna to wanna to spray a rag. I like this invisible glass cleaner right here. And just clean up the spot. Let it dry. Once the window is clean, take your camera. Make sure that that little ball joint is nice and straight because this is going to go just like so on the window. You want to bring it down a little bit to make sure you don't get this to block the 140 degree wide angle lens on here. You probably want to stick it right about there. So take off the backing. Keep an eye on it and stick away right there. Give it a press, maybe five, 10 seconds, and you're good to go. Now we talked about this briefly at the beginning of the video, but there are two main ways to power this camera. First way is more of a traditional way, can work with any vehicle on the market. USB cable, 13 feet, the longer cable, dual USB cigarette adapter made by Garmin. All right, all you do, Plug in your camera, run this cord along inside the ceiling, tucking it in, run down the column, come down, probably underneath the floor mat, and come up to your nearest cigarette lighter. That way, every time your car goes on, the camera is on, ready to go. That's the more traditional way. <laughs> now, what you can do with a car like this, or most Subarus, or most other Toyotas, or Hondas, any of those brands is if you have a powered rear view mirror right here with a certain type of pin connector on the back, you can use this dongle right here and the much shorter cable. And this is what the dongle looks like. Right here, comes with a couple different types of adapters. Looks like a micro USB and one of the smaller, older style USB connectors, like a, one of the small USB, I think it was like the Gen 1 
micro USBs. And then you have the dongle itself. Now this basically takes power by disconnecting the mirror, plugging into here. Then you have power to not only a USB, but you can still, of course, power your mirror. So let me show you how this sets up and I'll show you how it works. And we talk about how you can do some cable management as well, which is great about this option. There's no cables running anywhere. You can take some zip ties, run them to the back. Now, if you're looking to pick up any of this stuff you see in the video, you can go look down below. I'll put links for all of it. Look to the back of your rear view mirror right here. You have a 12 pin connector with a clip on the top. Simply push the clip down, pull straight out. Then you have it right there. Take your dongle right here. You go and take the mirror that you just unplugged. Plug it in to the one side. Take the other piece in the middle of the two connectors, which is gonna go right back into the mirror. You can see this little part with the two pieces sticking up is up. Simply clip that in. Grab your short USB cable. Plug the USB side into the dongle backing right here. On the other side of your camera is your power port right here. Take the cord, face it downward. Plug it in. Now either start your car or run electricity to the dash cam where it starts flashing like that. Keep this long cable and that USB cigarette adapter because what this is gonna be useful for is to take this camera and bring it on trips. You can actually take this and remove it from the ball joint, bring that spare ball joint, you can probably replace it with command strips, whatever you need to do, but take this on a trip with you. For example, if you rent a car, you can just simply plug this into the cigarette lighter, kind of just throw it together, run the power to it, and away you go. So this is being so compact that if you do go on a longer trip, don't have your vehicle with you, you can still record everything going on. Now that we're flashing, there is a microphone button on the other side over here. You wanna hold that for eight seconds until this turns green. There you go. And now you're formatting your micro SD card. Flashing red, that's good. Now green again, there you go. But you're gonna to wanna to download the Garmin Drive app. Like anything nowadays, everything has an app. Run through the setup, you know, do you want to use Bluetooth, push notifications, you know the drill. Sign the agreement, agree. What do you have? You have a dash cam series. It's gonna look for it via Bluetooth. Hold down the save button on the back until the LED flashes blue. Hold it down. We're flashing blue. I just hit pair. Could take a minute. We're waiting for it to pop up on the select an accessory list. Said it might take a minute, and then we should be close to finishing setup. It took several minutes to show up in that list, so now it wants you to create a Garmin account. If you don't already have one, you can always sign in if you do. Once your account is set up, you continue to walk through the steps here, talking about the vault here, so essentially you can view all of your video files on your phone through the app. You can activate or do it later, whichever you want to do. I set up the vault so it's connected to Wi-Fi, so it'll upload directly to the vault at any point when you're near that Wi-Fi signal. But here is the home page on the app. You can kind of see it talks about some of the voice commands you can use. I don't know if I'll use those, but they are helpful. You can kind of say different ones that allow to save a video, or if you want to take a picture, or record audio, stop audio, whichever you want to do. Scroll down here, you can kind of see all your videos and photos right there through the app. Take a picture, save a video, your live view, if you want an audio recording on or off. Depends on how much memory you have. Honestly, just keep it on, it'll be fun. Live view, connecting to feed, and there's your live view right there. Before we go on a little test drive, I wanna show you on the back here, you have two red lights. On the side is a microphone on, off. All right, so it's recording audio. And on the back here, it shows that it's recording. As soon as you turn the car on and this is powered up, automatically starts recording. This button right here is the save button. Now what this does is it's going to, in the event of an incident you see on the road or you wanna save something and remember where that clip is, it's a save point. You hit this, it's gonna save everything from a minute or two before and everything from a minute or two after you hit that button. Very neat feature, easy to find something, you see something reckless happen, you see an accident ahead, Whatever, if you remember to hit that, it's a little bit easier to save that clip and it won't be something that's gonna just get overwritten because what happens is with this being constantly recording as a dash cam, as soon as that memory card fills up, depending on how big the SD card is, as soon as it fills up, it's gonna overwrite the old oldest footage and delete it. Now, before we hit the road, 
and I'll show you guys actual footage of this camera. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions at all, get down in that comment section, ask away. And of course, the links for everything you see in this video are down below as well. Make sure you like this video, it really helps out the algorithm. Check us on Instagram and Facebook as well. And let's get to this driving portion of the video. Real quick, two other things to consider with your new dash cam. Go into the app, go to the settings and check for updates, update that firmware, it's gonna need it. You can also change the resolution depending on how big of a file you wanna have saved. And speaking of saved files, when you hit that save button, it goes to the app, you can use the vault. So if you lose your phone, if you lose your camera or something happens, you can go and download the app again, go into your vault through your account, and look there for your files that you might have lost from your video that you captured. And then you can plug the camera or slide the SD card right into an SD reader and check all of your footage from the entire trip you've been doing and find a certain incident or something you want to kind of save. So there's multiple ways to check video footage. There's ways to save clips. There's ways to look back at a footage from the entire trip and find what you need. Because of the wide-angled lens, I highly suggest that you tilt the camera up some, all right? You just don't need a lot of hood <laughs> in your frame. Here's a good example. Daytime, kind of towards the end of the day. Sun, a little bit blinding there. You have shade, you have trees, you have cars coming in the other direction. You're driving with some cars up ahead, bumpy roads typical daytime kind of back road driving. This is a good example of just driving maybe without the sun right in front of you blinding you. <laughs> just back roads, sun to your back, just driving along, 1080p, HD, not too bad. Cable management. Now you have the shorter cable here, you have the longer cable if you need to use that, especially like I said on trips with a rental car, you can have that longer cable. Just tuck it away as best you can, or you can run that longer cable, do a more permanent fix to the ceiling around the sides of the doors there. But this shorter cable here, you're gonna to wanna to wind back up nice and tight. You wanna zip tie it behind the mirror. If you do that, this is gonna be out of the way. That dongle will work great, out of sight, out of mind. Here's a good example of some back road driving at night. Got my LED headlights on and my LED amber diode dynamic fog lights going. Did a full review on those. And the install as well. And the car just passed by. We got another one coming up. You know, nighttime is, is difficult. It's still 1080p. It's not gonna be any type of night vision or <laughs> thermal or anything like that. But you know, it works for what it is. So it's some night, you gotta use the lights that you have on the truck and if you have obviously better lights or a light bar or whatever, if you're driving around somewhere, you can use that when you're allowed. But it works pretty well. So, well, drive safe everyone. Stay safe out there and have a good one.